Okay, I'm gonna show you. Um, so I picked up this piece at a thrift store. It was $20 and that day it was half price. So I bought, it was like a, a frame and a, a different, you know, obviously different artwork. Um, very well built. The, the um, frame is actually metal, believe it or not. But it was opening in the creases and um, at the miters. And I knew I could fix it. So of course I got ahead of the game and did the bar relief in the artwork <laughs> in the metal before I dealt with the, um, frame but so now I'm going to deal with the frame so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape the the miters and I'm going to do it in four different sections okay so of course I don't know how to like you know do a video and at the same time as um, doing the job but I'm going to just show you the next step in a minute I'm going to tape off then I'm going to show you a little bit more okay I'm back so I taped off the, the um, inside edges of two sides. See, that side and this side. And again, um, this is metal that has foil over it. When you, you, you see, you know, um, this type of thing, it's, sometimes it could be paint with a glaze or manipulated with paint, but usually it's foil over another substrate. Um, there's all kinds of metallic foils and foils in every color and look that you could want. Anyway, um, I knew I was going to have to redo this. So I'm, that's what I'm doing. So what I did was I, um, I, I scuffed. Well, I, first of all, I used some of this stuff, the steel stick and I made a putty like two part epoxy and I kind of, um, fixed the corners where the miters were separating. Let that dry. It dries very fast. Sanded it. And then I scuffed up the entire um, dark part of the frame that I'm going to be doing a finish on. And um, then wiped it off, then used mineral spirits over that just to get rid of everything, cut the shine just a little bit. For that step, you could use denatured alcohol, which I couldn't find mine. I think it's on job site. Um, or um, even um, degloss, or you wanna get try to get rid of you know, the gloss as much as you can so your next product sticks to it. Um, so my next step is going to be to apply um, my coating and then manipulate it. So that's what I'm going to do next. So I'll be back. Okay, bye. This is Texture Stone, I believe, from um, um, uh, the Plaster Center in Minneapolis. But you can use, I would think you could use a lot of different products for this, for creating this texture. I want it to kind of look like, kind of like wood grain. Oh, there's some slugs in here. Yeah, I've used it for other things and it's kind of gloopy, but you know what? That's okay. I think that'll be okay. Let me get in there and get some more. So we're just gonna put it on. Gosh, I'm so uncoordinated. I need another hand. All right, anyway, I'm gonna put it on. Um, I'll be back. Okay, so I finally got it spread on um, with the chip brush. Now I'm going to manipulate it. I've already done the, the, this inside piece with this. Um, actually, it's like just a 99 cent whisk broom. We got it at the dollar store for 99 cents, I think. I don't know. It's it's just an El Cheapo. It was just laying around and I needed something that had, well, I wanted to use something with pretty stiff bristles, okay? And I like what it's doing here. Some of those slubs I'm probably going to have to, um, you know, sand back a little bit. There's Because I don't think they, I don't think they're going to last. And I don't think they can handle being painted over. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I'm going to grab my water bottle because a lot of these water based products, well, water based products in general, um, in this type of situation, they, 
they like to work with water. I got this first side done, I think. Um, like I said, some of those slubs are probably gonna not survive the whole process, but um, yeah, that's okay. We'll just sand them back. But I like this. I like how rough it is. It's gonna be very forgiving if I didn't sand back all the problems with the old frame, which I know I didn't. So yeah, the main thing is to find a product that's gonna stick. Um, so I'm gonna finish um, doing the other three sides. I have to do this side and let that dry so then I can tape on the other miters. So then I'll come back and tell you what's up next. Okay. I'm gonna just show you, I'm pulling the tape on the, on the inside edges or I call them the mitered edges, you know what I mean. Um, pull the tape while it's wet. Um, in this case, if at all possible, pull it when it's wet. Um, different, you know, different plasters in different situations. Sometimes I wait to let it dry and then score it and then pull it. Um, in this case, I wanted a nice bright edge that will create even maybe like a little seam. And um, the best way to do that is pull it when it's wet. See how nice it is? I'm just gonna wipe this off. Yeah, I'll show you the other side. Added a, a little bit of water to the product and it helps a lot. Jeez, it was so <laughs> thick before. But yeah, so adding water helps. Isn't that fun? Oh, I think I'm gonna like this. I don't know. Maybe it'll be bad, but so far I think I'm gonna like it. Sorry, I can't do one video at the same time very well. So this is gonna be good. Oh, isn't that fun? You know, maybe you could use joint comfort compound for this. I don't know. I think it might be too crispy, but um. If you added a little bit of Elmer's glue to it, that might be the trick. And I'm not sure because I haven't done it, but that certainly would be a very easy, easily accept, um, found <laughs> product. Easily, uh, what's the word? You should be able to have that. <laughs> you have it in your basement, you know? Okay, so I have two sides done and I'm gonna do the other two sides It'll probably be tomorrow because I don't know how fast this stuff will dry. We'll see. Okay. It's the next day and I have, um, I finished putting on all of the texture and it's dry and it's lovely. So as you can kind of see, there are some crumblies. So I'm going to just really lightly sand it back and then I'm going to prime it. So that'll be the next step. But, um, yeah, it's, it's doing exactly what I wanted it to do. Yes. I wonder if some of that texture and some of those rubs that I was talking about um, on there, just because um, I like that. But I didn't want to sand away much of that. Or, or just smooth it out again, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And you don't have to worry, this stuff is pretty tough, man. So, um, once I'm done with this, I will vacuum it and wipe it. And then I'm going to, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to prime it with a tinted primer. Um, I'll see what I have in my basement. I have a lot of paint. Um, a tinted primer, I'm thinking maybe, you know, you could even use like a rusty red or gray, or even if you have something tinted brown or tint it yourself. And then when I paint it black, I can um, sand it back and have a little bit of that uh, um, primer color shine through. And I think that would be cool. So we'll see what I have around here. Mm. You can really go at this. It's leaving a lot of the, the slubs that I want. <laughs> Sorry, I know it's an annoying word, but you can sand back as much or as little as you want. But it's tough. I mean, it's ah, It's on there. It's, it's doing. 
it's doing what I want it to do. Good stuff. Okay, so we've run into our first little snag. So I'm going to show you my first little trick. Um, okay, so what happened in this corner is it got kind of overfilled. See that? It just doesn't look right. I want it to have a seam like this, right? So I'm going to sand it back a little bit more. Let's get it flat. Let's admit it. It's flat. There's no seam. Okay. I'm going to fart around with it. Mess around with that a little bit later. Anyway, okay, so see this corner? <laughs> I'm using my kitchen fork. I'm going to go right into that. Right to the area where it's mitered. It's another annoying word. I'm using too much, but see what I'm doing there? Um, you don't just you just kind of play around with it until it it meets your satisfaction. You know what I'm saying? I just want it to look like it's supposed to be like this. So it's soft enough to carve into, which is good, but it's hard enough that it's very stable. See, this is a lot of fun. I could go at this all day. Anyway, yeah. So you, you just can't be afraid to, um, you know, play with stuff. That's what, I don't know, that's what art is. You just kind of keep messing around to get it to where you like it. Okay, I'm starting to prime this. Um, I'm using all-purpose primer, um, tinted in agree agreeable grays, gray that I had in my basement. Sherman Williams product. Um, okay. Um, I if I had something darker, I would use dark direct or darker, or I could have mixed it or whatever. Anyway, I just this is what I had. But the cool thing about it is, as I do this, I can envision. Um, what the frame would look like if I decided to paint this part of the frame light cream color or white white or, or whatever also okay so I fully intended to paint it black which I think I still will possibly with some distressing but even just having this first product on and now um and now um priming it I can also envision what it would look like if it were light and it were distressed, okay? So it's not probably gonna stay like this for me, but it's kind of fun to watch this process happen. Now I can say, oh, Mindy, <laughs> what if you painted it white or cream color or agreeable gray and you did it solid? Or what if you distressed it and you know, that was your final product. And I don't think it's going to be, but the cool thing is, is as you're doing this process, you can make decisions along the way. <laughs> like Bob Ross always says, time to make a big decision. You can actually let that decision evolve as you're doing this type of work. So, so it's time to figure out what color paint I'm going to use on this frame. And I was looking around at what different products I have and which colors, and then I remembered I had picked up a quart of this um, chalked paint in charcoal um, that I was going to use, and I intend to use on the um, countertops in my studio 
which um, I'm not in my studio, <laughs> I'm in my dining room, which doesn't make any sense. But the light is really good in here. And my husband at this point has resigned himself to the fact that our whole house is a studio. So um, anyway, I'm gonna try this paint and see how it acts. Um, sometimes c these commercial products that are available to the general public get a bad rap and sometimes rightfully so and not time, sometimes not so rightfully so. So we'll see, we'll see how this acts. Um, also, if it's not dark enough, this is a char charcoal. Um, I can add some universal tints, which I have here. I have lots and lots of black. I can just add black to it. Um, but as you can see back there, my built-in cabinets are a charcoal b black or a charcoal gray. And my piece is going to potentially hang with that piece of cardboard as I'm trying to figure out exactly how high, high I want it to hang. So that's my little mock up there. So um, yeah, this might be a good color. So I'm gonna try it. Okay, so I have um, a coat of paint, um, the chalked paint in charcoal. I have one coat on. Um, yeah, went on really nicely. I believe I'm going to have to apply a second coat, but it looks like it's drying pretty quickly. Um, so that's good. Um, I am going to put a second coat on, and my first thought is that it's still not quite dark enough. So if, what I think I'm going to do um, is put a second coat on, and then I'm going to apply a black glaze over the top. So that'll be fun to watch um, how to make and apply a glaze, which there's many ways to do that. But um, that's what I'm going to try. So, um, yeah. Oh, let me just take a second to kind of tell you about this piece. Um itself is obviously an owl and last year or two years ago I took a class in the Atlanta area and learned the art of ba relief B-A-S relief um, so learned how to carve carving plaster to raise instead of just doing flat paintings um, yeah raise the um, texture so that's kind of a fun thing. Um, so this is my Snow Queen. And um, she is being submitted for a local art show. So she might be on the walls downtown um, of a kind of a cool place. And I'll keep up with you on that. Anyway, um, yeah, so this is Bar Relief. I did the Moon and Mosaic, which is another phase I went through doing a lot of mosaic. So as an artist, I go through... Um, a lot of phases, learning lots of different things. And I think, oh, this is my thing. I'm going to do stained glass forevermore. And then, you know, oh, I think I'm going to carve um, bar relief forevermore. <laughs> I think I'm going to do murals forevermore. Oh, I think I'm going to do, you know, decorative wall finishes forevermore. Use mica on the ceilings forevermore. And, I, and the thing is, is I just, I'm going to do all of it. And I have done all of it. And well, all of those things. And I'm always learning. So, um, this little house here is a little fairy house and I just used, I just did it on paper because I'm not sure that I want to paint it in there or not. I kind of think I like it without, but I like the fairy house. Anyway, that's kind of my process. Like, hmm, before I paint it on there and then not like it. Cause I think the composition without it is just nice and clean and, you know, but anyway, that's another kind of step in the Mindy process. So anyway, I'll be back and we'll do a glaze. I hung it, okay? <laughs> it's not done and I know that seems kind of backwards, but I hung it because once I put the glaze on, it's gonna take a long time for that glaze to dry. It just takes a long time for glaze to dry. And um, I didn't wanna wait till tomorrow to hang it. I have to work tomorrow, so <laughs> we gotta move along with this deal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape off two sides like I did the first time when I did the um, texture. I'm gonna tape off um, two sides and I'm gonna apply the glaze and I'll show you about that. And then I'll do the other two sides and then I can pull the tape and I can do touch-ups while it's drying, la la la. Then I can actually, t you know, touch up my painting itself, which I had to do horizontal and I'm used to painting um, vertical <laughs> to be honest but this piece is so heavy I didn't really have a good place to put it um, so I kind of did it um, on my dining room table and that's really not the best vantage point for doing 
this. So now I get a real clear feeling about this and how the light's hitting it, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, okay, so I'm gonna um, glaze the frame. Okay, so I've made a glaze here, a black glaze. I'm using um, Proceeds, whoops, Proceeds Carbon Black and Modern Masters um, Tintable Glaze. So the Tintable Glaze is mixed with um, like a colorant or a universal tint, not with paint. There are some glazes that you can um, mix with paint, but um, this isn't one of them. Anyway, um, ratio, I am totally just, I eyeball everything, but let's say it's, you know, 10 parts glaze to one part carbon black. This carbon black is very snappy, <laughs> it's strong stuff. So um, I want it to be, you know, somewhat um, um, transparent. So that's the point of a glaze. So um, yeah, you kind of play around with it and, you know, maybe kind of slide it around to just see how it's acting, how transparent it is. If it's really opaque, you want, want to put more glaze in it. So, um, okay, so I'm going to try to do this. It's not easy for me, as you know. Um, okay, so I have the corners taped off. And now I'm applying my glaze, which you see is very black, blacky black back, which I love. Okay, now you may be saying, Mindy, I know a little bit about glazes. And should you be going over that very matte finish? You're right, it should have more of a sheen, so it will resist this glaze a little more. But when I'm at home, I break rules. And that's how I learn, okay? If I was at a client's place, I would be doing this um, kind of more by the books, truly. But at home, let's face it, when we're at home, we just want to get it done. <laughs> we stand on chairs and set of ladders, and it's true, that's, that's what happens, okay? That, this is just like I told you on the first video, I'm just keeping it real. I, I want to keep it real because... If I waited until everything in my life was perfect to do these videos and I had, you know, everything was just perfect all the time, I would never do do this. And I want to do this because this is fun and it's fun to learn this stuff. Especially, I mean, we're, we're all cooped up with this. Um, with this pandemic and so we're all looking at our houses and thinking, oh, you know, I really... Would like to do this or that and you should hire someone and everyone's busy if they are even working uh, people in the trades are just swamped myself included um but i have stuff i want to do too so i you know i told my husband this winter i want to stay home and do work i, I just come commissions to work out at home and things so um I'm spending some, you know, more time at home than I normally would. I do have to be out in the field quite a bit too, though, this winter. But okay, so now I just applied the glaze. Um, glazes can stay wet for depending on the glaze for, um, let's just say maybe an hour. Um, up to I've used glazes that have stayed wet. The next day they're still wet, which can be annoying <laughs> just depending what your schedule is like. But anyway, let's see what happens when we pull this off. Yeah, I'm liking that. Whoops, I'm sorry. And sometimes um, you won't even be able to really see what's happening until it's dry, but especially with this. You pull this. So I'm just using a rag, a dry rag. Okay, so I have all four sides done. And you could probably see the, the, the side ones are, oh, I should be on the other side of the table, um, are drying and they're matter, matter, not matter. Maybe they're mad, I don't know. But anyway, the, the ones, the top and the bottom that I just did are still shiny because they're wet. As it's drying, it's getting more matte. Um, different glazes act differently. You can actually buy glazes that different ha have different sheens. Um, 
but yeah, uh, I, like I said earlier, in the, during the process of this, you can be making decisions. And what I decided is that when I saw it very wet and shiny, I liked that. So once this is all dry, I'm probably going to put a semi-gloss um, clear coat over the top of it to make it shiny. So um, yeah, it just, you just have to kind of roll with it. I um, Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pull tape, which <laughs> I can tell you from being a painter for a long time that pulling tape is the most satisfying thing ever. So if you ever have, if you ever at a place that, where there's painters and you hear them pulling tape or say it's time to pull a tape, I can tell you right now they're doing the happy dance. They're not whistling. They wish they could whistle because <laughs> you finally get, whoops, you finally get to see the bigger picture. Okay. I'm sorry about all the jerky camera stuff here, but anyway, pulling tape. Yes. Very satisfying. Of course, when you pull the tape, um, it reveals any kind of bleeding that may have happened, or um, I even had some foil pull off because I had this inside edge taped um, of this kind of goldy area. I had it taped when I did the artwork, and then when I pulled the tape, some of the foil came off, but I'm not worried about it. I can touch it up with gold paint um, and, you know, do a finish on it to match. Or I have lots and lots of foils. I can, but that'll be for another video. I'll do, um, show, telling you about foils. So anyway, now I'm at the point where it needs to dry and then I'll do touch-ups. Okay. I decided that yes indeed I am going to just leave the frame the way it is um, with this texture and put a clear coat on it I like I just like it the way it is but I wanted to show you two things um, I can fix this so I'm just going to do this just to kind of show you um, if you wanted to sand it back okay this is to, to distress it this is how you can do it and this is kind of the same concept if you were distressing your kitchen cabinets that you decided I can paint my kitchen cabinets but I want that distressed look. Okay, it's as simple as this. I mean, granted, you know, there's there's other tricks. La la la. But anyway, generally this is what it is, okay? It's sanding back. And then you have to clear coat it over that. The second thing is Okay, the second thing is I'm going to show you how to do a positive application to get kind of a interesting, distressed kind of look. So I'm using a little bit of Venetian red. This is by Nova Color, um, and this is going to be hard for me because um, you know I'm uncoordinated. But just put a little bit on a regular El Cheapo sponge, okay, and offload it, offload it, like you know, get as much of it as you can off. You could even rub you know, rub this around just to get most of it off there. Okay, then go back to your frame. And let's say you wanted to have the edges just a tiny bit red. Can you see how I did that? I know the sun is a little goofy. Okay, so that's called tipping. Just putting a little bit of color on there. And you, as you can see here, I did both. I did a positive application and a negative application. Just erasing a little bit of that. Okay, so does that make sense? So I have a little bit, and I'm just going to do it really lightly, kind of just like a flat, barely touching. Added a little bit of red to my frame. Can you see that? Okay, so I'm going to take my black glaze and go... Oh, over what I just did because I want it to just be simply the black glaze and then I'm going to clear coat it. It'll be done.